Today I'm going to show you what's inside of a power door mirror and how it works on your car. Now a power door mirror is typically controlled through this combination switch that allows you to select which mirror and which direction up, down or sideways to control. Now that in turn is going to allow the mirror to move up and down or side to side depending on how you control it. You can see that sideways has considerably more motion than up and down. Now in order to start taking this mirror apart there's a couple of screws that I'm going to undo on the bottom and then once those screws are undone I'm going to remove this base here. Then I'll just pop off this cover here. Now I just have to deep in this connector in order to get the wires through. I'll just insert a pin into there and then I can pop it out. And with that I'll just pull this plastic shroud off. And we're left with just the mirror. Two more screws to remove here. Next up we need to remove the mirror glass and the correct way to do this is to heat up the mirror and pry it off the back. But I'm just going to use my panel removal tool here and wedge this in and I'm going to pry it off this way. Oh shoot I broke my brother's toothbrush. Hope you can find out. Maybe a screwdriver will help. It's interesting how gloves make your hands stronger somewhat. Oh there we go. And I cracked it, but who cares. And here's what we got inside the mirror. We've got this little center ball socket that moves back and forth. And that's the pivot point for the mirror in the center here. We've also got these two smaller sockets over here. Now those two will come into these little holes over here. And that's responsible for moving the mirror in and out and up and down to move it sideways about the pivot point. And finally, we've got these two wires here that go to the heating element and behind the mirror glass. I'm just going to remove this little ball socket on this side here. As you're moving the mirror in and out, you're actually pressing down on these little retainers over here. Next up I'm going to unscrew the actuator from inside the mirror housing. Then I'm going to remove that assembly from the mirror housing here. And here's what the actuator looks like. There's only three wires going in the back. Now if you take a look at the wiring diagram for the power mirrors on this vehicle, there's actually no computers or anything in the way. It's a fairly simple circuit. We have power that flows into the switch at the top here. And then we have a combination switch over here where one action of either moving it to the right, left, up or the down position is going to change three different circuits over here. And then also moving it to the left or right positions to select your mirror is going to change two separate circuits over here at the same time. There's two motors per mirror and this is for the driver's side and this one is for the passenger's. Now to demonstrate how this actuator works it actually rotates when I spin the motor. And I'm going to put my finger here to give it a little bit of resistance to represent the friction in the mirror. You see it's rising, give it a little bit more resistance and it's going to rise. Then when it hits the end, it's just going to keep clicking and clicking and clicking. Similarly, if I go in the opposite direction, I can actually lower this actuator very slowly. And the same thing can be done to this actuator over here. I can lift it up. So essentially how this works is we have these two actuators that move up and down in order to tilt the mirror's angle about the center point. Now if you look at where the center point is located, it's orthogonal with this motor here and this motor, which means that this one's going to be responsible for up and down and this one's going to be responsible for sideways tilt. Now we're going to open this up to see what's inside. So I'm just going to pry off these little tabs over here to see what's inside. And here's what we got going on inside of here. We have two little RC kind of motors that spin really fast. They've got these two spiral gears on them and that spins this larger gear for a gear reduction that allows you to adjust your mirror precisely without it moving too fast. Inside of here we have the actuator and as this outside gear rotates with the motor the actuator is actually threaded on the inside there and as I rotate this, you can see that it actually expands this distance between where the mirror would sit and the housing or where the motors are sitting. And this expansion of the distance is what gives you the tilt of the angle of the mirror. Now if I pull out this little actuator here, you can see that there's threads on the inside there. And they have these teeth that thread in. Now if you push it and pull your mirror too much, you can actually damage these threads. So you don't want to do that because then it won't engage anymore. Now because this is an external mirror, it's got these rubber grommets here to protect any water intrusion. Finally, instead of here, we have these two DC motors. I can just pry them up. They're just standard 12 volt motors. You see we have the two terminals there that operate with the two terminals over here and vice versa. So now that we're done talking about the motors that actuate the mirror, we're going to talk about the switch that controls it all. So let's say for example we wanted to move the left mirror tilt upward. Well we're going to turn the dial to the left position to select the left mirror which is going to complete the circuit on both of these switches here. Then we're going to move the joystick in the up position which is going to complete the circuit in all three of these little circuits here. Current is going to then start flowing from the top here and then come down to the up part. It's going to be completed over here. Then I'll head over to this switch over here. Since we selected the left mirror, it's going to jump over to the left mirror and that's going to send it down over here to the driver's side mirror. Since current is flowing in this direction, the mirror is going to be tilted upward. The current's then going to come back up through here. Since we've completed the circuit for the up, it's going to jump over here 
then across the top, and then back down to ground. So you can see just how intricate this is because we've got a combination switch where current is flowing through this part, then back through this part, and then back out through this part here without shorting anything out because of the physical limitations of a joystick won't allow you to select more than one of these at a time. Now this switch has left, right, and neutral positions as well as sideways and up and down. This is a purely mechanical switch. The mirror circuit has no extra computers or microprocessors to tell it what to do. Everything happens inside this switch. The first thing is just to remove all the plastic shrouds that's around it. Then I'm going to dig in here with my screwdriver and lift up these little tabs and just work my way around. I'm going to slowly pick that off. Now on the bottom of the switch we have these little contact pads and these can move with the switch. So as I rotate it from left to right it actually rotates and then as I move the switch up and down you can see how it slides back and forth and then sideways. Now that contact pad is going to bridge the connections on this part here to complete a circuit. So for example if these two prongs here are touching these two areas here it's going to bridge the gap between these two and allow current to flow around through here bridge over and then go further down into the circuit. Now as I rotate the switch, current can also be redirected on this side over here through these individual little points to tell the current where to flow, either to the left mirror or to the right mirror or to stay neutral. Now you can see the rest of the circuit is in multiple layers and it's encased in this plastic connector. If I further take apart the switch, see we have this little plate here and the contact pad. Inside of here we have the little joystick that moves. All right, so I pried that up and you can see there's a fairly nice spring inside of here. We have this little part over here, and then we have this little plus shape inside of here. That's to direct the joystick sideways and back and forth. It's also used to provide a limit when you're rotating the switch from left to right. And inside of the mirror we have this backing piece that's actually the structure of the mirror. This is just an aesthetic plastic piece, and it holds the pivot point over here. You can see that it has a spring over here that allows it to turn and fold the mirror and also fling back into spot. Now despite this being plastic, it's actually pretty strong. And that's pretty much all the components that go into making the power mirror in your car work. Make sure you hit that bell notification icon and follow me on Instagram if you want to see more videos just like this one.